Day. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, grandmothers, great grandmothers. Tremendous uh, celebration today, celebrating what all you do. And uh, one day is not enough, not to me. Thank God every day to my mom, and my wife, and all she does. And I will thank you, you mothers, this morning. I stand on the house and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God to touch us this morning. Ask God to move. And ask God to strengthen all the Lord. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, to come to your house, God, to honor Jesus Christ more than anything. We come to honor our mothers, God, as well. We thank you, Lord, for this congregation that gave in this place today. Thanking you, God, for all that you've done this week, God, and keep us one more time. We're praying, God, that you move in this church today so richly, God, so great that we leave this place. We have lifted God and changed by the gospel of Christ. Draw us ever close to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. While you remain standing, we just sing Faith of Our Mothers. Just the same cue as faith of her father. Join us in Tuesday, 7 o'clock, Women's Auxiliary will we'll begin back. We've kind of delayed that with COVID, but we're getting things back into place now. Uh, all ladies are invited for a Bible study and Christian fellowship. We always have a good meeting then, uh, so make plans to attend Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Wednesday, 6.30, we'll continue our team kid meeting. Uh, also, we need teachers to help us sign up for that. We're going to have vacations and all that are uh, be coming in the summer months. We need backup teachers. And, uh, someone to do a slot, so let us know if you can help out with that. Let Melissa, let Nicole know. And uh, if you got kids that be picked up, let Gloria know. She'll get them picked up in the van and uh, bring them to the house of God on Wednesday nights to teach them. It's been very successful so far. We're thankful for that. I think we've had over 20 youngins every every Wednesday night. We'll feed them and also give them the word. Very important. Uh, May 22nd, from 10 to 1, youth practice with a youth uh, Sunday skit. Is that right? Get on that. Let's get one to skip uh, starting the uh, 30th of the month for, their, for the uh, youth Sunday. So make plans 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock um, on that particular day to help us out with the skit. May 23rd, we got a business meeting that night. Ain't had one in about a year now, so we're going to try to get some things together. So make plans to attend 6 o'clock May 23rd. Also, on May 30th, we'll be doing our Honor the Graduates. If you got somebody that is a graduate, you can get honored that day. Let Linda know, and uh, she will. We'll plan accordingly. 
Uh, June the 4th, we got our youth beach trip. Adults are welcome to attend. Uh, and I require that if you have a child that's under the uh, age of the third grade, uh, youth expenses are paid for. Adults got to pay your own way. Sign up sheets back here on the table to my left, to your right. Uh, sign up for us on that. Plan to have a good time that day. And uh, information is there. Send a list if you need more information on that. Crockett reunion, June 13th at 1 o'clock. Uh, most of us are Crockett or later for Crockett. All plan, all plan to attend, right? Uh, June 13th to the 17th, Vacation Bible School. More information to come. We do got the date set on that. And uh, we look forward to Vacation Bible School, having a good time with these kids and teaching the Word. Did I miss anything? Uh, Pastor, I, I need the, um, the forms that you're filling out for the graduates. Uh, Pastor Jeff will A lot of events coming up. Mark your calendars. We know exactly when to be here and, and uh, when to present ourselves. Uh, who's got a need in the house? Don't lift a hand. Anything else closing? Persecution's on the way. It's in the neighboring country of Canada. How long more is going to be here? We need to pray that God will continue to allow our religious freedoms to be exercised. Turn the hands of time, God, and you can turn every situation, God, for our good. 
For there's many that are, that are battling sickness, God, disease, things in the body, God, that we cannot put a finger upon. We know the finger of God, oh Lord. If it'll put a finger there, God, you can fix all things, God, and make all things right. We're praying, God, for those that are battling in their mind or battling their body. We believe in God that Jesus Christ will come by, be that captain of our salvation, God, to ease everything. I believe for those that are in persecution of other countries, God, even now as we speak, God, we believe, God, for the alleviation, believe for your grace, God, to even cover them, God. Thank you, Lord, for freedom is from the words of Christ, God, but others are not in freedom, God. So we pray over them, God. We pray for our sin this morning that you would be in this house to real so strong. Uh, that your word, God, would go forth in power and unction, God, to change our lives, oh God, for the good. Uh, that we can serve Christ to the best of our capability. God, we serve, we trust you, and we glorify you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <coughs>
Who's the choir buddy? This time we have our Mother's Day presentation of our youth. Just for her heart of pierced gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. R means right, and right she'll always be. Put them all, all together and make the mother the world to be. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. 
wish I could hug my mother. She's, she's gone to heaven. I know we'll be reunited one day. I can't wait for that day. So if your mother's around, don't take it for granted. Appreciate it. Um, I'm actually being led to change something real quick. Matt and I were talking this morning. We, uh, there's a new song out called Talking to Jesus. And uh, it's got a, I'm going to do a little piece of it. And it's got a, it's got a little something love for you. Grandma used to pray out loud by her bed every night. To me, it sounded like a mumble, like she was out of her mind. She said, Boy, this kind of praying is what saved my life. You all have tried sometimes. Now I know she was right. She was talking to Jesus. She was talking to Jesus. She'd been talking to Jesus for all of her life. Mama used to drag me to church Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Khaki pants and a polo shirt. Boy, I put up a fight. She said, one day, son, you'll thank me for having God in your life. And yeah, I know she was right. Yeah, my mama was right. She been talking to Jesus. She got me talking to Jesus. She got me talking to Jesus. Yeah, my mama was right. Yeah, I'm talking to Jesus. I love talking to Jesus. I'll be talking to Jesus for the rest of my life. i 
experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your Yeah. 
church.
beautiful stuff here. Beautiful. This time over kids, children's church. Children, children. Change men's hearts from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. I've seen God move men to a place of repentance where they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, submit to Him, and there's nothing more beautiful than that to me. This morning, if you got your Bibles, Book of John, chapter three. John chapter 3, I'm going to start in verse 1 and read down from there. I want to try to give us something this morning. We can applicate to our life, use it, understand it, and realize spiritual truths come from physical examples. Jesus Christ spoke in parables at times. He was paralleling physical things with spiritual, trying to bring to a point. And that's what I want to do to you this morning, bring to a spiritual point through physical example. Word of God says in John chapter 3 and verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are the teacher who come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he have the second time of his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Understand that this morning, church. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said it to you, you must be born again. The winds blow where it listens, and you hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell from where it comes and whither it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. This morning, just a few minutes, I want to preach on what topic? The process and the preservation of spiritual birth. The process and the preservation of spiritual birth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, this morning, Lord, for your word that is strong. We thank you for your presence that we feel in this house already today, God. I pray that we'd understand the process this morning, God, of what it means to come to God by way of Jesus Christ. There is no solution Lord, this world needs but Jesus Christ himself, God. We need to know that, realize that, and where God is trying to bring us to, oh Lord, sometimes it'll be some prevailing, sometimes prevailing, prevailing in birth, but God, we must hold firm to that foundation of truth and know that Christ is birthing something great inside of our lives. Well, now that it come to pass, that it come to fruition. We trust you, God, this when we believe you. God, anoint thy servant the gospel message to bring forth to thy people, God, forever changing us, changing our lives, our hearts, God, in our direction for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The process and preservation of spiritual birth. My wife has given me three youngs, beautiful youngs, I might say. And every time she went in that labor room to bring forth that child, it was always, it was always, uh, looking forward to a reward that that child was going to be birthed into this world. It's a beautiful picture. Before that child was brought forth, there was some prevailing and some prevailing to get that child here. Was there not? 
Nothing more beautiful to bring them children in this world, but there's something more beautiful this morning, church, in the eyes of God, and that's somebody being birthed into the spiritual realm, somebody being birthed to the kingdom of Almighty God. There's nothing more real and nothing more great this morning for a man or a woman of God to say, you know, Lord, I, I've gotten it wrong in my past. I've sinned and done ungodly things. But, Lord, now I'm going to your eternal kingdom. I'm forever changed by that gospel message. It is essential to be birthed to the kingdom of God by that spirit, not flesh, but spirit, if you're going to see God on that throne and to magnify his holy name. Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. He was a Pharisee, a religious folk. But even in all his religion, he could not find a peace and could not find a satisfaction all the time. Men all the time now are trying to find some type of satisfaction in religious ever or, or formalities of things that they bring forth to the table. Some men try to find satisfaction in education, philosophy, theology, and all those things have their place in life. But, but a man will run himself to death trying to find a place in this world, trying to find a new birth inside of his life. If he does not know Jesus Christ, church today, uh, we represent our mothers, we honor them, and there's one to honor today named Jesus Christ. Uh, he's the one that's put a new birth in our life. Uh, he's changed me, he's changed you. Uh, and if there's anything to bring to that place and bring forth that birth in us. God did an awful lot to get you to the place of spiritual birth. Did not? He sent his son to die on an old rugged cross. And in that travailing and that prevailing on the cross, he brought forth children, which mean you're a part of that kingdom. You bring no Christ. But sometimes, church, we have to find ourselves saying, Lord, you brought me a long ways. And I have come. I've been birthed into your kingdom. I'm struggling. I'm fighting. I'm seeing things I cannot bring. I cannot get past those things. It's in that travailing process where God is trying to birth new life uh, and new, new spiritual in, in, insight inside of who you are, who you are in here. Nicodemus came to him. He says, you know, I see all the miracles that you're doing. No man can do it unless he's sent from God. But Jesus Christ directs his attention back to the, the, the place in which Jesus Christ came to do. And that was to seek and save that which is lost. Christ come to seek and save that which is lost and tell him you've got to be born again if you're going to enter this eternal kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. It's all right, amen. I said, baby, because I want to have to get that baby here. But he brings him back to that attention. When me and Nicole were pregnant with Maddie, beautiful child. But they told us something was wrong. They said some type of abnormality, new moralities were about her. Went to that place up there in Raleigh, had to look at old things when they do the chromosome, all that stuff works. They want to do some testing on her. And we was on the way to the hospital, on the way to the hospital that day, and I said, baby, I don't know how this is going to go down when I trust Jesus Christ. I grabbed her hand right there and that poor being to pray, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen, but I trust and believe you. We got there, they, they had a couple things out, out, out of line with that, according to the test and stuff they were running. And God gave me a dream before we had that child, and God showed me a beautiful baby girl birth in this world. I said, baby, you know what? Everything's going to be all right. There's some troubles and some struggles, but you know what? Jesus Christ will bring it to pass. It's the same thing, church, and the spiritual thing. There's some struggles, there's some problems. There's things the devil's saying you've done in your past and you've gotten wrong, and God can't make it right. But I want to tell you, when God first something in you, there's something beautiful there, and something that you can be champion in Christ. There's men and women in this town congregation that you're bringing in things that I can't get over. I've, I've done wrong and done it wrong, but I'm asking God this morning that uh, he would deal with your heart let you know that he makes all things do. He brings all those things to pass. Right. You can bring those things here today. And you can leave a, li a liberated man or woman. We got to the living room with Maddie. Cole looked at me. That labor process, she said, baby, I can't do this. Baby, you ain't got no choice. <laughs> you got to bring that young to this world. I held her hand. She buried down the bush and that baby come out. Hardest thing she ever did with her life, she told me. But when that baby come out, she was the beautiful thing I ever seen. Her skin was just right. Her eye color just right. Her hair was just right. There was nothing more beautiful than that. That child was birthed in this world. What are you saying? I'm going to tell the church this morning. That you'll be brought to the place where God is trying to destine something in 
your life, trying to birth something new. And there's a struggle, there's a problem. Sometimes it'll be the hardest thing you ever do in your life. But can I tell you this? If you will not quit and you'll pursue on God, then God will bring something great. And in that greatness, He will glorify His holy name. I feel this this morning that we are struggling through things. We're trying to get to the place where we're birthing something great in our life and we're being hindered in that. The word of God says in Isaiah 66, 9, shall I bring to birth and not cause it to bring forth? Shall the Lord say, I'll cause it to bring forth and shut the womb, say, God, no. That means when God brings it to the point that he wants to birth that, he's going to do it because his word proclamates that his word says that, and you've got to stand on that and believe that. Amen. There's two things that happen when a woman gives birth. I don't blame the next birth. I've just seen it a couple times over. The number one thing that happens when that baby's on the way is that water breaks. Baby, give it to the hospital. It's time to deliver this child. In the spiritual life, the first thing that God breaks forth in our hearts and our lives when he's trying to bring forth spiritual birth is the word of the living God. It says in the word of Ephesians chapter 5 and 26, we're sanctified and cleansed by the word. That means when God is trying to birth something great, trying to bring something to the place of bringing in your life, uh, there's a water of the world that's a birth and pour. Uh, that's the word being put down inside of a heart saying, God, you said it, I believe it, uh, and I know it's coming. Uh, that means there's a birth that's going to take place and it's going to come uh, because the word says it's going to be the case. It's the word of God that's being preached with the spirit of God that makes us a reality, that makes it real. There's many men about behind the pulpit that they're preaching the gospel that they've never been identified with. There ain't no spirit of God there. Ain't no quickening power there. But I would tell you, I've been to a prayer room and I know the gospel message. It'll quicken you. It'll change you. It'll redirect your life. I don't want weak preaching. I want the strong, unadulterated word of God. I want something Something when I know I go to that world and tell them about Christ, I know I'm standing about a firm foundation. Is it all right? Got a question this morning from my brother. He said, I don't understand this. How can the church allow lesbian, gay, gayism, and all that stuff that is LGBTQT, I don't know how to even say it, uh, without allowing that stuff in the house of God. Why? Uh, because they changed the word of God uh, to believe a lie, do things that ain't right. Uh, I still stand on truth that God that is an abomination. It's wrong. Uh, it's not right. Uh, and we must stand on truth, church. I don't care if Congress said it's all right. Uh, God said it's wrong. Uh, it is wrong in his eyes. They're trying to do these things on love. They're trying to promote love. But God will never forsake his truth. But for somebody's ungodly move upon love, it will never be that way. I love the truth. And when you love the truth, it'll set you free. It'll make you free. And you're free indeed. I come to tell somebody, you can be free this morning by the word of Almighty God. It's wrong. I don't care what day of the week they want to try to present it to you. It's wrong. And I commit you to stand for truth. Amen. Amen. That word bringing forth inside your life, you know something's on the way. But there's something else that happens in, in the process of that birth. When that woman's in labor, that woman's in pain, that woman's trying to bring forth that child in this world. There's one more thing that that child has to go through. When you bring that child out, he's clothed in blood. Is he not? It's a mess of a child. That's why they got to take a clean on that table over there. They give him any dab with all these things, clean them here and there. Me and you, we're going to be changed by God, and he's going to burst something in our life. It has to be by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what makes things new. That's what makes you right. And that's what brings spiritual birth into your soul. Amen. It's the blood that makes us right. The blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Follow me on that. 
people are trying to make different avenues of how to get to heaven. Trying to tell you sin's all right. You can still get there. You follow me on this. Don't say religious bulldozers to try to widen out that narrow way. And God said it's still that way. You said, Pastor Matt, how narrow is the way to heaven? I'll tell you, it's as narrow as that cross right there. You'll come by way of that cross, that narrow way, you'll not get there at all. When a woman is in travailing birth, when a mother's about to give birth to a child, it's a narrow road in that birth canal to bring that child out. Jesus Christ said, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. What does that mean? That means there's one road and one direction of how to get to heaven, and it's a narrow road that leads by way of Christ. And if you try to go any other way, you're a thief and you're a robber. Amen. That's the Bible. That ain't me preaching. You say, but Pastor, man, I'm all right. I, I, know, I know a couple of verses. I can kick those around, and I feel like I'm living a new life in him. The Word of God says that when we were born in this, into the spiritual family of God, that we are a partaker of the divine nature. When you're born of a woman, born of a man, together, come together, not a man and a man, not a woman, come on, listen to me on this. You have something called DNA. 23 chromosomes from the male, 23 from the woman. That's 46 in total. That's what makes up that DNA. We watch these forensic files, and they can take up somebody's DNA by that blood that they drop on the scene or whatever. When you come to Jesus Christ and you're a partaker of his DNA, his divine nature, that means you don't do the things you used to do. That means the endemic nature that I was born with in Adam, I don't have that no more. I, I've taken on a divine nature in Jesus Christ. That means my walk is different. My talk is different. I, I don't act the way I used to. I, I'm not mean to my wife no more. But I live the name of Jesus. I'm not saying we ain't got struggles and problems. But I find the grace I need to overcome those things. There's people who live right now and they, and they say they've been changed by Christ, but they'll live like that world just like everybody else, and there is no change in their life. Can I tell you, we you ain't going by the word, by the, by the blood of Jesus Christ, you ain't going to make it, you ain't going to get that. Sometimes during the labor process, the umbilical cord can get wrapped around that child and keep him from being birthed. I don't know what I'm talking about. Sometimes when God is trying to burst something in your life, something in that old nature is trying to hold you back and keep you from being birthed in the kingdom of God. You say, but I, I can sit a little bit there on the weekend. I can live like a devil. I won't do it on Sunday morning. Everything will be all right. You see, that middle court is keeping you back from your destiny in Jesus Christ. You're not reaching that place where God wants you to be, but that world is holding you back from what God wants you to do. If they do not adjust that child to get it unwrapped so he can be delivered, that child dies. I dare say this. I put this out there. It's what God's given me to give you. But there are people, Christian lives, that are being birthed still born into the kingdom of God because they will not let the world go. That world has choked the life out of them. And when they arrive on the scene of God's kingdom, they're no good to God because they've not been liberated by the power and the grace of Jesus Christ. That's strong preaching, church. You say, well, give me evidence of that. One man from the day of Pentecost preached and how many souls were saved. 3,000 souls were saved. That means the man had an intimacy with God. That means he was fully walking in the kingdom of God, exercising and doing what God wanted him to do. How many souls do we save now, church? How many souls are saved by our ministry that we're walking day in and day out of this world? How many people are led to Christ by our witness and by our testimony? It's quiet. You see, you can't call yourself a child of God, unless you represent the kingdom of our God. You say, but I've got things I can't overcome. 
You see, the early church had problems too, trying to birth people to the kingdom of God, having to walk right, talk right, and do right. But the apostles told them in Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, it says they were confirming the souls of the disciples. That means the newly converts were getting saved and coming to Christ. It says he was telling them, exhorting them to continue in the faith and that through much tribulation we must enter the kingdom of God. That means if you're walking right and you're being worked in the kingdom of God, there's going to be tribulation that comes against you. There's going to be trials and things that you face on a day-to-day -day basis. But don't you quit. Don't you stop. Because God's power lets you overcome and lets you get through those tribulations. Amen. Jesus validated that even furthermore. He said in Luke 16 and 16, he says, since that time the kingdom of God has been preached, uh, he, said, he said, men have to press into a church today. Uh, you've got to press to the kingdom of God. Uh, as a woman brings forth the deliver, you've got to press to this kingdom saying, ain't nothing going to stop me. Uh, ain't hell, ain't high water, uh, ain't religion, ain't politics, ain't nothing going to stop me from getting where I need to be with God. Amen. I'm working my way back. See, when a woman gives offspring and that child lives and grows, he eventually grows up. What happens when they grow up? They get married and they have children. The church is a type of that birthing process and what culture days. When people come to the house of God, they should be changed. They should be birthed to the kingdom of God and they should be different. The gospel should have a direct impact on their life. The word says in Isaiah 66, 8, for as soon as Zion travails, talking about the church, she brought forth children. That means us as believers should lay the foundation for the next generation to come along. We should be saying, Lord, raise in me a generation that will fear and, and, and magnify your name, that my, the next generation sees the works that I do, sees the gospel that I preach, and they carry that message on. I was looking, I'm almost done. Y'all bear with me. I was looking in the fellowship hall. There's 23 photos of 23 previous pastors at Mount Zion Church. I'm the 24th. I told them across the 24 pastors, right? And I go and look along the lines, I look at every one of them, and I think, what did you have to do to travail to prevail to get the church where it's at today? How did you lay the foundation for the next ministry to come in? I believe that God is coming soon. Jesus Christ is going to soon come and take us all home. But if he does not, and there's 24 little pastors that, 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 that preach home beyond me, I, I want them to look at my figure and say, you know what? I, I've heard things about him. He laid the foundation for the next generation. He didn't fear to speak the things that are true and are right. I, I want to know that I preach that same gospel, church. Amen. The gospel ain't changed. People have changed. And if we don't change the world through our actions, through Jesus Christ being worth his eternal kingdom, then shame on us. <laughs> Last thing I'm going to pray. Revelation 12. We have a prophetic view of Israel. About a woman in the sky about to give birth to a child. That's the 144,000 there, 12,000 of each tribe, of the 12 tribes of Israel, 144,000 total. That's not the Church of Latter-day Saints. It's the woman out there. It's not Jehovah's Witness. It's Jews. And that book, though, says that she is about to give birth. She's travailing. And as soon as she's trying to travail to give birth to that child, it says that Satan, the dragon, is coming forth to devour that child. You see, God does something in our lives. He's about to bring something to pass, about to birth something in us. And the devil's right there to steal it away from us. He's right there to, to combat us, to conflict us, to try to take away what God is trying to give us. You see, it's always in this infant state when we're most vulnerable. You can't, you can't talk, you can't walk. You're most vulnerable there. So when God tries to birth something in our lives, we're the most vulnerable in that infant state where the devil can come and try to devour and take us away. It says that when she brought forth that child, 
that God called it up. That means when we are fighting and God is bringing forth something great in our life and the devil stands there right to devour that, that God raises us up above his, his clenching fist and he will not allow anything to get in the way of his plan going forward. You say, what allows that to happen? That's faith arising inside of my heart saying, God, I believe your word. And I believe you're going to pre preserve what you're birthing inside of me. A couple of verses down it says that Satan and the Michael and the heavenly angels are all fighting in a spiritual battle. When God births that, when he puts something in your life, that's when the spiritual conflict really begins. And that's when you find Satan and heavenly angels collapsing on your behalf and fighting in the midst of all of that. We're in a spiritual struggle and a spiritual warfare. But God preserves his church. He keeps us. He sanctifies us. And he allows that spiritual birth to take place, and he keeps that. Church, this morning, what is God trying to birth in your life? What is he trying to, try, trying to do in your life? What is he trying to bring you to, bring you through? I don't know, but he knows. If you'll go by one of those two things, those two things put together, the word and the blood, I'm going to tell you right now that God will bring you through. And when Satan comes to attack you and comes up against you, God will not allow to be overtaken. and will not allow to be taken out of the way. Let God continue to grow you. And the grace and knowledge of his holiness, his divine nature, and you'll see things unfold before you that you never thought possible before. Would you stand with God? Church, if you want prayer this morning, if you want to pray, just want to attend this order. It's open to you this morning if you want to come and pray. And just ask God, Lord, whatever you're trying to bring me to or bring me through, God, I want you to do that. I want you to burst something great inside my life. Let me be born again with that spiritual endeavor, God, that spiritual desire that Jesus Christ gives every single one that will come to him. Would you come to the altar?